All right, so the last time we had Metropolitan Bank on um, a video, part of that was really around the whole issue with Celsius, or excuse me, with Voyager. And today is a little bit different. It's involving many different entities out there, including Crypto.com and others. We'll break that down and what this means for kind of the connection of where your U.S. dollars are held, because typically these, um, these exchanges have to utilize these banks for holding USD fiat funds. So... That's really what today is going to be breaking down. Uh, hopefully, this will answer a lot of questions in that as well. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into TechPath. If you're new to our channel, uh, make sure and subscribe right now. Just hit the like button. We break down these all the time. We'll do some deep dive research and really get into this. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, and that is Quantum Miami. This is an event that's happening on the 25th through the 27th of January here in Miami. And it is one of the um, you know top conferences out there. They go into a ton of agendas around blockchain, Web3, uh, they've got uh, their after party going on, and a ton of speakers really kind of lining up here, including Mayor Francis Suarez. Here's Andre Coronia, who is one of the lead devs over at Phantom, Michael Kong, the foundation founder over at uh, Phantom, Brock Pierce, uh, BitBoy will be there, Rand. There's quite a few. So this is one of those events that I think will be a gathering of people, and it is going to be one that I think will be good for people to attend. If you're really into what's happening right now in the crypto market, make sure and use our discount code, which is just Baron20, and uh, you'll get 20% off your tickets. All right, let's get into uh, a little bit of the news here. Uh, these are the banks that kind of got left holding the bag during this crypto implosion. And many of them are the banks that we know and love because they're connected to most of the tool sets that we use to onboard and or maintain our assets in fiat. If you look at some of the ones that were connected here, Silvergate, uh, of course, we know the situation there. We'll talk about that in a second. Provident Bank Corp, Metropolitan Commercial. This is the one uh, really focusing in on today. Signature Bank, uh, Customers Bank Corp, and then uh, all of these, among others, all kind of geared toward the recent collapse of FTX. Now, the bigger question here is what effect will this have on crypto and in general, because essentially these platforms have to utilize some sort of banking relationship to be able to hold that fiat. And there's a lot of questions here that will hopefully answer some. But uh, if you look at uh, a little bit about what they were talking about, Metropolitan Bank Holding, this is uh, to exit the crypto asset related vertical. If you look at MCB, I'll zoom in on that for you guys a little bit here. Relationship with these clients are limited to providing debit card and payment and or account services. The company also has no outstanding loans to any of these clients. And they've commenced the process of closing its relationships with these clients in an orderly fashion, meaning crypto clients. I expect that process to be completed by 2023. This is very key because it represents several of the biggest companies out there that involve these kinds of services. And of course, the big one is crypto.com. And this is... You guys know this. We've talked about this many times. This is the Visa card that Crypto.com offers. It's one of the biggest things. I still open up this show to the CEO of Crypto.com to come on and talk about their roadmap and their strategy going forward because I think this starts to represent question marks, and they're not the only one. This is not picking on Crypto.com. We're going to show that there are many people, many companies uh, that are going to be involved here. And I think the issue is uh, here at hand is whether or not banks are going to completely exit the space. And what does this mean for crypto and in general? Who's going to hold that USD uh, for you in a lot of these chains before you convert it to a token? In many cases, people have USD on these. Uh, and all of that plays into kind of future of where crypto is going as well. Here's crypto.com. One thing I noticed, though, around really kind of scanning through their... Uh, their website, they, they started to really remove, I don't know if it was ever there, but I mean, in the past, there have been, you know, several mentions of Metropolitan Bank. This one right here was the Visa card holders do not hold an online checking or savings account with Metropolitan Commercial Bank. So I'm just curious how that gets applied. And as I said, we'd always love to have Crypto.com on the show because I think that would clear out a lot of things. I've always questioned about it. Uh, Crypto.com was one of those places that I used to hold uh, assets in and just uh, really kind of uh, exited that. Another thing that's happening over there is them delisting Tether, which is pretty big in itself, even though it's the Canadian users. This, of course, is Chris, uh, their CEO, talking about this. And 
the only real question here, and I mean, this is kind of scary in general when you delist a major uh, stablecoin like Tether, but why? You know, is there just not enough transaction on it? Which all, every exchange out there is all about basically churn because uh, that generates trade fees, all the kind of profitability that they can get to. What is the reason for that happening in uh, Canada? Love again to hear that from crypto.com. But these just represent a lot of questions that we haven't seen a lot of answers to. Other companies that this will affect is Revolut. This is one of the biggest Web3 banks out there, neobanks in, in, uh, in Europe. And right there, let me kind of zoom in on that. Prepaid MasterCard and Revolut prepaid Visa card are issued by Metropolitan Commercial Bank. So again, the unwind has started to occur. Revolut, I feel like most likely, just because of their size, should be able to secure a new banking relationship pretty quickly. But you know, they haven't necessarily done it just yet. And here's the cards that Revolut, um, you know, gets hit with. So there's Metal Black. Uh, and you can do this on Apple and Google Pay. Remember, JP Morgan is the uh, bank behind the Apple card. So maybe ba Morgan plays into this. I'm not sure. There'll be a lot of different scenarios uh, that get into this. Now, this is very interesting because this is the PowerPoint of the deck for... Uh, let me kind of zoom in up here on a couple of things. I just want to go to Metropolitan Bank. This was their investor 2020 Q1. So this is back in the heyday. And I'll go down here and zoom in on all the partnership slides right here. And you kind of see, here's um, the collected global payment clients. And this is kind of going back in history. You see Voyager there, BitPay. This is going back in time. But it shows the transition that Metropolitan Bank has gone through. Now you look at their report right here. Let's go up here and take a look at this one. This one was Q4, just last Q4, 2021, uh, of 2021. And here's where they were on their partnerships. So I want to kind of scan down here and show you their partners. Here we go. Uh, and then here's all the partners that are in. Look at that. Crypto in full steam, uh, end of 2021. Uh, and you've got, of course, Coinbase in there, right there. Uh, Genesis in here, Revolut, Uphold, that's the XRP thing. Uh, you can kind of see it right up here, BitPay, Bitcoin IRA, Bitstamp. These are all related to Bitcoin in terms of onboarding. So these, again, are being unwound based on what Metropolitan is stating. The last slide deck that we scoured was their Q3 of 2022. And this one, let's go further into this one and then pop into their partnerships pages. And here we go. Uh, and then again, BitPay, Bitcoin, but a lot of them start to disappear. So I don't know if that's good. Maybe that means that some of these, uh, some of these inv uh, institutions have been able to secure other banking relationship. But you can see crypto.com, of course, as of Q3 last uh, quarter or last year, they were still on uh, the hook there with Metropolitan Bank. Again, all this being unhooked, question mark will be is how do they respond to this, uh, to this? We saw some movement pretty quickly in this kind of scenario with onboarding around the WISE scenario. So this isn't causing FUD. What this is is causing questions to make sure that you're just responsible understanding how your financial institutions are constructed. And one of the things we saw, even within uh, the scenario of things uh, like onboarding, which is Wire, we did a big video on that. Make sure and check it out because uh, it does break it down. But many of the companies that were utilizing Wire have already started to secure these additional relationships to replace Wire. I think that might be the case here with Metropolitan Bank. What concerns me is the number of big banks that are starting to exit the space. And Signature taking massive, uh, massive losses uh, overall. You look at this piece right here, Coinbase commences their partnership with Signature Bank. This was the one that was done back in October. That was after Metropolitan. So if you looked at back at the chart there, I just showed you those three decks over two year span, Coinbase exited end of quarters uh, last year and then entered with Signature who is now in a big issue with their own situation. Uh, and of course, here's uh, the situation on Signature, downgraded uh, as Jeffries due to shrinking crypto business. Uh, the cut to hold the formerly bullish analyst uh, basically says this one has taken so much heat. And I think this is another scenario as we get into banks and how this applies, because really what it boils down to is you essentially need a banking license with an exchange or 
You need regulation, and this is a thing that I think will start to push regulation even more so, is if we get regulation into a position to where some sort of charter or license is required, and maybe this is through banking, that, that of course could align with what some of these scenarios that play out in the future of how onboarding as well as custody of U.S. dollars, fiat, is controlled. Because that's still, you still have to connect your bank to an exchange, put in U.S. dollars, and if you don't buy a token with it immediately, what happens to that U.S. dollar? Is it truly uh, dropped into um, essentially a security layer, much like a Fireblocks is for traditional or digital assets uh, for a banking side of that? So this is the question mark that's being risen around all of this. Um, I think this was the piece, yeah. Signature Bank reducing crypto tied deposits by as much as $10 billion. Uh, again, this is just showing more of these guys who have been in the business. Now, maybe they just weren't strong enough to hold through these bear markets. And we're going to see a whole new crop of uh, bigger banks that jump into this and really kind of take the bull by the horns and really start to advance the system, which could also be the scenario. Listen, banks will eat banks alive uh, doing this. So it just says, we're not just a crypto bank. We want to be this, uh, come across much loud and clear. Signature Bank CEO uh, Joe Topalo said in an investor conference call, basically, uh, FTX is one of the bank's clients, all of the crypto exchange deposits on signature amount of less than 1.1%. Still, the relationships have caused uh, signatures share to drop almost 20%. And I think that's the bigger question mark right here, is just the association to crypto for a publicly traded company that's not crypto related, it starts to create those kind of connections in terms of negative outlooks. And that in itself, because of a board, doing its fiduciary responsibility to stockholders, they have to respond to those kind of things. And that's the issue that I think we're facing. All right, so a couple other things here. This was just, I would just recommend if you're on Coinbase, go over and read their December uh, 20 drop that they did, which was a big outlook. It was 2023 market outlook. I've done a lot of reading on this one. Uh, Stable coins is the one I'm watching very closely with uh, Coinbase. Obviously, they're tied to USDC and what that might look like. I'm just kind of curious, do we see a potential USDC connection here for the security of your fiat, which is then routed through USDC and then tied into the circle connection, which is over here. This is where Cir circle currently holds their assets. So again, this is New York Community Bank. Um, and you can kind of see company reports about 60 billion in loans, 46 billion in deposits, so pretty solid. This is all based on Circle partnering with New York uh, Community Bank Bank Corp uh, for custody here on USDC reserves. So this is getting very complicated. Um, sometimes you don't want to know these things, but just as being a smart investor, you always want to know. The cool thing that you have with fiat banks is it's kind of a, you know, because it's been a system that's been in place for so long. Hey, I'm secured by the FDIC to up to 250K. Yes, it's a pain in the butt if that bank goes insolvent and I have to collect that, uh, but at least it's a federally backed uh, scenario. This is not necessarily the case what we've seen in the crypto space. So I think we're going to continue to see more of this uh, jockeying around in a lot of these areas. Uh, just on a quick note, because uh, we've got a video dropping on uh, DCG, uh, read this quick one. We're going to go to questions in a poll in a second, but I just want to uh, just make sure you guys know. Barry Silbert, let me zoom in on this. He actually responded, I think everybody knows what, what happened here, but basically Cameron uh, Winklevoss from uh, Genes uh, Gemini uh, came out and said there's been some fraudulent activity. Silbert responded, there is a letter response now on dcgupdate.com. So you guys can catch that. This is a live show, so hopefully you'll get a chance because we're dropping that video here in a bit uh, on DCG and the effects this may have on Bitcoin. Overall, so a lot happening in the space. Man, this is a busy week. Uh, we're gonna continue to try to drill down into this. Right now, what I'm looking at in the scenario of these exchanges is my recommendation, don't hold fiat on there. If you're gonna go on, buy your token, move it into a wallet, be done, you're good. Uh, but get your fiat out of there or convert it to a stable coin if that's what you feel um, you know, comfortable with. Not financial advice, but you know, something I would do uh, to go in that direction. Let's jump over to the poll real quick and take a look. All right, at this point, do you still have any cash or crypto in crypto.com? 
wow, just about 50-50. And that doesn't, that's not good or bad. I think that just, you know, some people just may not have ever used crypto.com. But for those of you that are, there's 47% of you saying, yeah, you're still using it, which is, uh, that's pretty significant. Actually, that's pretty significant uh, based on our, our numbers here. Let's go into a couple of questions. Uh, let's say, what do we have here today? All right, uh, Crypto Stevo, watch all these banks come back to crypto in less than a year. I think you're right, Steve. That's back, back to my point is that maybe there are some banks just sitting there waiting going, man, the chops are coming in. Capitulation is here. This is all I needed for my financial you know, uh, compadres to capitulate and I'm gonna pounce on the opportunity and open up. Things like TD Ameritrade, the potential of fidelity, all these guys that could play into this in a very, very uh, quick uh, <laughs> period of time. I love it, Nick. Paul is the bear on. I am not a bear. I am still bullish on crypto in general. We, I, we launch an entire company around this, so I am still very bullish, but I am not blind to reality. That's the difference. That's what you gotta look at. Mark uh, saying, hey, scary move that's supposed to be feeling good today. Well, the rally is good, that's the good news, but news like this to me is a gift. These, this makes you more aware of what's happening in the market. And to me, I would rather know and be able to make my decisions based on that versus getting rugged or not knowing what's up and aware, that's easy. And the cool thing, the cool thing around this is if you just, I know it's hard to do the amount of research our team does, but hey, listen, that's why you subscribe here. We plug in a lot of team on top of this research. We spend hours and hours on these before they get done, sometimes days before an episode gets rolled out. Uh, and a lot of this is so fast moving, you have to just keep, keep pace at this. So it's a big deal. Smart banks will stay in crypto because they know they can make money. That is for sure. This is gonna be a big one um, that I think, and I think we're gonna see a power bank it, remember, Metropolitan, not a power bank. Signature, not a power bank. Yes, publicly traded. You know, Cosmopol Cosmopolitan Bank, Vast Bank. I mean, we've covered all of these different banks that are out there working with it. Even the bank of, which we just discovered today, of, of uh, Robinhood. Not necessarily a power bank. So I think a power bank is waiting in the wings to possibly pull the trigger here. Listen, you don't need banks, all right? At the end of the day, hold your Bitcoin, self-custody, Work on exchanges the best you can. This is a different financial system. It's just a situation that we're dealing with to deal with banks for new onboards because that's really the biggest issue right here is getting new people into crypto. Ian McKay, uh, Paul, assuming we get to continued rallying beyond the CPI print, Thursday, where would you be looking at to take some profits on Bitcoin? I'm looking right now at the 18 range. Um, where is Bitcoin right now? I don't know if I've got a chart. Let me pull it up real quick. And just take a look, because it is flatlining a little bit on sentiment, uh, but it is sh still showing a little bit up on sentiment in general. Let me go to the advanced chart real quick. That'll pop up. Where are we? We're back to 17.4. Okay, so a little bit of run here in a minute. Let me go to the four hour. Yep, I'm on that. Zip it out. So we're looking at a little bit of a run right here on these fours. So 17.4. This got really close to 18. Uh, a couple of times. So be on the lookout. I think we could see that uh, ranging. This is the thing we're looking for right now is uh, kind of that high 17, 9, 18. That's where I would probably take some uh, Bitcoin profits in to look for a new entry point down the road. Um, but all that's going to be cool. Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum both also surging just a little bit here at time of filming. So interesting stuff out there, guys, for sure. All right. If you're not part of the Diamond Circle, get in. It's really easy and it's free. Uh, and we drop a couple of emails to you a week. If you can't keep up with sometimes the stream, because we're dropping 50, 60, 70 videos a month, uh, because that's just a cycle that is approaching in crypto and tech. Because remember, we do technology, Web3. We look at kind of the advanced side, Tech Path and Metaverse Insider, our other show. Um, so you can catch up by just getting part and being part of the Diamond Circle. If you guys want to catch me, it is out there on Twitter. Very simple, at Paul Barron. And follow me out there because uh, I, I try to talk to as many of you can. I get a lot of, of DMs. I try to answer as many as we can. Uh, and we love the communication. So you guys can do all that out there. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.